So sadly we finally come to the final lecture and in this we're going to look at slightly different ways of expressing concentration. The learning outcomes for this lecture are firstly you should be able to carry out calculations using percentage solution by mass, calculations using percentage solution by volume and calculations using PPM. So in this the final lecture on pharmaceutical chemistry we're going to look at a slightly different way of expressing concentrations. As chemists we are more, more used to expressing concentration as moles per litre but occasionally people for various reasons use slightly alternative ways of expressing concentration. Sometimes we talk about the percentage solution by mass so you might talk about a 2% solution of sodium chloride or we talk about the percentage solution by volume a 10% solution of ethanoic acid or sometimes we talk about concentrations as PPM so we're just going to run through these different ways of expressing concentration so let's start by looking at a percentage solution by mass If we say we've got a 1% solution by mass of sodium chloride, what we mean is that we have dissolved 1 gram of sodium chloride in 100 cubic centimetres of water. Okay. That's what we mean by a 1% solution. We talk about a 10% solution by mass of sodium chloride, then we've dissolved 10 grams in 100 cubic centimetres. Now you might have more than 100 cubic centimetres of the solution but that ratio of 10 grams to every 100 cubic centimetres of water will be maintained. So let's look at a couple of examples. So what mass of starch is required to make up 250 cubic centimetres of a 5% solution? And this is something we do quite often when we make it up a starch indicator for various redox titrations. So it's a 5% solution, so that means that in every 100 cubic centimetres of the solution we've got 5 grams of starch. Now if it's a 250 cubic centimetre solution then we multiply each number by 2.5 and we get 250 cubic centimetres would be made contain 12.5 grams of starch. Okay. Let's look at another example. If 10 grams of calcium chloride are dissolved in 400 cubic centimeters of water, what is the concentration expressed as a percentage solution by mass? Right, so in 400 cubic centimetres we have 10 grams. So if we divide by 4 that tells us that for every 100 cubic centimetres we have we've got 2.5 grams of calcium chloride. So it's a 2.5% solution of sodium of calcium chloride. So that's like a slightly harder example that you might get in advance higher, but still, you know, pretty straightforward. So during a synthesis, a student pipetted 20 cubic centimetres of a 1% solution by mass of potassium chloride into the reaction vessel. Calculate the number of moles of potassium chloride added to the synthesis. Now, I think you should try and do this question yourself first the positive tape and then I'll go through the answer. Right so we've got a 1% solution by mass of potassium chloride so that means that if we had 100 cubic centimetres of it we'd have one gram of potassium chloride but in fact we've only got 20 cubic centimetres so 
I had to divide 100 by 5 to get 20. So divide 1 by 5. So in 20 cubic centimetres, we only have 0 0.2 grams of potassium chloride. The question didn't ask for the, the mass of potassium chloride, but the number of moles of potassium chloride. So the number of moles of potassium chloride will be the mass, 0 0.2, divided by the gram formula mass, which is 74.6, and that comes out at 2.68 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So that's the number of moles of potassium chloride we have added to our reaction mixture. Right, uh, let's move on to a percentage solution by volume. Very similar to percentage solution by mass, but it'd be equivalent for adding a liquid to some water as opposed to a solid to some water. So if we've got a 1% solution by volume of say amylase, that would mean we've put one cubic centimetre of amylase and that is then made up to 100 cubic centimetres by adding some water. Obviously not adding 100 cubic centimetres of water, but just enough water, 99 cubic centimetres, to make it up to 100. And if we've got a 10% solution by volume of amylase, then we'd have started off with 10 cubic centimetres of amylase, and we'd make the volume up to 100 cubic centimetres. Very similar to the percentage by mass. So for example, what volume of ethanol is required to make 200 cubic centimetres of a 4% solution? So a 4% solution, so in 100 cubic centimetres of the solution, we would have added 4 cubic centimetres of ethanol. So if we want to make up 200 cubic centimetres of the solution, the volume of ethanol we'd need would be 8 cubic centimetres. Or another example, if 3 cubic centimetres of ethanoic acid is dissolved in water to make a total volume of 20 cubic centimetres of the solution, what is its concentration expressed as a percentage solution by volume? So, in the 20 cubic centimetres, we have 3 cubic centimetres of ethanol, no ethanoic acid in this case. So, if we had 100 cubic centimetres, then to keep the same concentration times 5, we'd have to add 15 cubic centimetres of ethanoic acid. Right, finally, slightly different is the concept of PPM. Now, what PPM stands for is parts per million. So if we talk about one PPM, this means you've got one milligram in a well, in a kilogram or a thousand grams. So one milligram per kilogram. So probably easiest to explain through uh, an example. So baked beans, for example, contain trace amounts, I mean small amounts of nickel. That says 25 ppm. So what mass of nickel would be ingested by eating 200 grams of baked beans? So. 1 ppm is 1 milligram per 1,000 grams. So if we ate 1,000 grams of baked beans, we would ingest 25 milligrams of nickel. But we're not eating as much as 1,000 grams. We're only eating 200 grams. So that's a fifth. So divide by five. 
So 200 grams would contain five milligrams of nickel. Right, so here's an example for you to try. Yeah. Decaffeinated coffee granules contain traces of benzene at a concentration of 65 ppm. And indeed benzene used, when coffee was originally decaffeinated, they used to do it by adding benzene, which would uh, extract caffeine. But little bits of the caffeine would remain in the sample. The permitted daily exposure to benzene is 3.5 milligrams per day. I've just made up that figure, that's not necessarily true. Calculate the maximum mass of coffee granules that can be taken daily to be within the permitted level of benzene. So stop the tape, try that yourself, then check your answer with me. Okay, so the 65 ppm of benzene, so that means 65 milligrams of benzene in one kilogram or a thousand grams of coffee. Yeah. So we want to know how much coffee is equivalent to 3.5 milligrams. Now, unlike some of the previous questions, I don't know how you get from 65 to 3.5. So I'm going to divide through by 65. So it becomes one milligram of benzene would be obtained by drinking 15.38 grams of coffee. And I'll multiply by uh, 3.5. And that tells us that 3.5 milligrams of benzene would be obtained by using 53.8 grams of coffee. Okay, that's it. That's really all you have to know. So by now you should be able to carry out calculations using percentage solution by mass as a measure of concentration, percentage solution by volume as a measure of concentration, and ppm as a measure of concentration.